Hello, wonderful people of the interwebs. I am Eldest Sun, and thank you for joining me today for another Prison Architect tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about prison automation, which you guys helped me pick by voting on a poll. So, well, I'll do that again. There will be a little icon on the top right of the video today, which will, if you click on that, you'll get access to a poll which you, where you can vote. I'll also put it on some of my previous tutorial videos. So if you feel so inclined, you can go back to some of my older videos and vote again. So let's get started on the tutorial. So you might be wondering, why should I automate my prison? I don't need to do that. I'm lazy. Well, there's one very, very good reason, and that is efficiency. So in a regular prison, you're gonna need guards scattered through your entire prison opening doors for people. So this requires time and money. So I'll tell you what I mean by that. A guard is going to need to be walking towards that door, which takes time. And you're also going to be, need to pay that guard's wage to wait around and open the door. With automation, you can just have a single guard, like this one over here, waiting at a door control system, opening doors throughout your entire prison. So that's, that's saving you time because Whoever's wanting through that door doesn't have to wait, and you're not having to staff extra guards to wait around and open doors for people. So let's talk about what you're going to need in order to start your automate, start automating your prison. Main thing is remote access. So you get your warden, security, remote access, easy peasy, and that that will unlock pretty much just these two rows in the uh, in the utilities tab there okay let's get down to the nitty-gritty uh, the first thing that you're going to need to do before you can do anything is unlock a remote access so get your warden then security then remote access easy peasy once you've got that part of the tech tree you'll have everything unlocked in the utilities tab here in order to start automating your prison the first thing I'm going to talk to you about is uh, the door control systems. So this is kind of the main reason why you want to get remote access. It allows you to have remote, remotely controlled doors, and I'll show you how to do that. So first off, you're going to build door servos on all the doors that you want to be automated. And these door servos essentially are little motors that open the door whenever a signal is sent to them in order for them to receive a signal they need to be connected to something and that something is the door control system I've cleared all the connections in my prison just to give you a better idea of how this goes so you click on the door control system click connect then click on the door servo that you want to be connected and one thing to note that tripped me up for a long time is that during while well, time is paused the connection doesn't show up. So once I press play here, that connection is revealed. So now we will grab somebody and get them to walk through this door. Let's get this janitor to walk through and press play and watch what happens. So he goes up to the door. Oh, maybe. And the light turns green and the door opens. So the light turns green when that signal is sent from the door control system by the guard. Without the guard, nothing happens. And that's pretty much all you need to know about the door control systems. You can repeat that for as many doors as you want. The only problem is if you have too many doors, one guard is not going to be able, be able to keep up with opening all the doors in your entire prison. That's why I've got two here. Originally I had them all connected to all the same doors, opening and closing everything. It, it just allows me to, allowed me to have nobody waiting for a door to be open because they can only open so many doors at a time. Next I'm going to talk about door timers. So these timers are used to send out signals during specific times in the day. If we click on one of these you can see we can open or close things during different times. So you can pick, you can pick specific times like 5 a.m. till 6 a.m. or you can pick specific parts of your prisoner's regimen to be open. So right now I've got it set for work and work slash lockup for maximum security. You can also set any security, that sort of thing. It's very easy to set up. So essentially this is just a way to open the doors in bulk at specific times in the day. 
which allows you to take some of the stress off of the guard operating the door control system. You can get super creative. You can say open the doors to the canteen only during canteen hours or only in the yard during yard time. Let's take a quick uh, look at the connections here. I've got it connected to uh, all the places that my prisoner are working. So the laundry, the chapel, I don't know why I have it connected to that. Probably because it's free time. The library and up here the shop and things like that. I've also got it connected to these status lights and you saw there everything just kind of turned off. I put the status lights there just to have a visual, like a more visual uh, clue that these doors are open. So it's now, it's no longer work time. So those connections have turned off and that was really good timing. So everything is turned blue, the status lights are off and the door, door servo lights are red. Those first two things that I talked about, the door control system and the door timer, are kind of the two big things that you're going to use remote access for. You can also use it for kind of other stylistic things, which I'll talk about now. So right here is one of those things. So I've got pressure plates, or pressure pads as I call them, set up here, and three status lights. You'll notice that this door is closed, but we can't see the prisoner in there. So I set it up so that, let's look at the connections. Whenever this pressure pad is being uh, pushed on, the light will turn on, turn on. So it sends a signal to the status light telling it to turn on. And if we set a guard in there, oh, he's on break, you're on break, over there. We'll see. I kind of did this as a way to not use CCTVs. So. I can tell how many prisoners are in there, which cells they're in, without even seeing it. So let's just do a little demonstration. We'll send the guard over there, and that status light turns on. We can lock him in there. He's been a bad, bad guard. And now both those lights are on. So that's kind of a cute little thing that I like to do with the uh, status lights and the solitary. Obviously this won't work unless you've only got one square, or if you put pressure pads in the entire cell. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show you involves the use of logic circuits, which I tend to not use a whole lot because the things you can do with them are quite advanced and a little bit superfluous because what they can do, they don't really add a whole lot to the prison. There's only one case that I use them in, and I'm going to show you that, and that is to make a an airlock. So I'll show you how to connect it up to make that. So essentially what, essentially what will happen is that when one door is open, the other door will close creating that so-called airlock kind of thing. Let's, I'll show you how to set that up. So you're going to need a pair of doors, a pair of servos attached to them, door control system, and a pair of logic circuits. On both the logic circuits you want to set them to not. You can change it by right clicking it and it'll cycle through all the uh, different logic, uh, logic things, whatever they're called. Next you are going to want to connect everything up. So let's go into connections. I want to connect uh, the door. Actually, let's do, let's do these first. So you're going to connect each of the logic circuits to one of the doors. So it's going to output to each of those. Then you're going to connect the door servo to the opposite uh, logic circuit. Like so. Then you're going to connect up the doors regularly. Like that. So let's take a look at what's happening. So essentially what happens is when it receives an input from the one of the servos, it flips the, the signal. So this is getting a, a true from the servo and then outputting an, a false to the, the, other, the other door. And same for this one. So it's getting a false and outputting a true is what essentially is happening. And it'll stay like that until someone walks through the other side. So now that one has turned green, and this one has turned red, so it will try to close. And it's as easy as that. That's it for this quick practical tutorial on prison automation. If you found anything useful, give me a like. Consider subscribing for notifications on more videos. And also, don't forget to vote on the next uh, topic for the next prison architect tutorial. 
Once again, I'd like to thank you all and have a wonderful day.